Welcome to all of you in this video. In this video, we will talk about reproduction. Now, reproduction is defined as a biological process through which an organism gives rise to the young ones similar to itself. On the basis of mode, the reproduction has been divided in three major categories, which are asexual reproduction, vegetative reproduction, and sexual reproduction. The difference between all these three is on the basis of gamete formation and the fusion of gametes. So, in asexual reproduction, no gamete formation and fusion of gametes takes place. Vegetative reproduction is found in the plants and sexual reproduction is a kind of reproduction which involves gamete formation and fusion of gametes. In this video, we will talk explicitly about asexual reproduction. So, let's define it. What is asexual reproduction? So, when an offspring is produced by a single parent without the gamete formation, then it is called asexual reproduction. Now, while talking about asexual reproduction, we have to keep some points in our mind. The first one is that here a single parent is capable of producing offsprings. Hence, this is called monoparental reproduction. Monoparental because only one parent is participating in this kind of reproduction. The next important point which we have to keep in our mind is that no fusion of gametes takes place here. As I have mentioned previously, hence these are the somatic cells which take part in these reproduction. That is why this is called somatic reproduction. Now, for those people who do not understand what is the difference between a somatic cell and a sex cell, I would like to clarify that somatic cells are the normal cells which are diploid cells. So, the diploid cells are the somatic cells that take part in this reproduction. Hence, this is called somatic reproduction. Now, here all the offsprings are identical to one another and they are also the exact copies of their parents. Hence, they are called clones. So, the offsprings which are produced in the asexual reproduction are called clones. Now, here one more thing which we have to keep in our mind that is, in this asexual reproduction, only amitotic cell division takes place. So, there are several types of cell division that is mitosis, amitosis, meiosis. I will make a different video, a separate video for them. But for the time being, you just remember that amitotic cell division is a kind of cell division which takes place in unicellular organisms and it is a simple kind of cell division. Now, let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of the asexual reproduction. Okay. So, here the first advantage is that in the asexual reproduction, the simplest method of cell division occurs which is called amitotic cell division. The second important, important advantage is that in the asexual reproduction, a large number of young individuals are formed. So, this is the second advantage of the asexual reproduction. And the third advantage is that it helps in dispersal to far away places. That means a large area can be covered by the organisms which are produced through asexual reproduction. Okay. So, it is a kind of reproduction which supports population growth very rapidly. Now, let us talk about the disadvantage of asexual reproduction. So, as far as disadvantage of asexual reproduction is considered, it is one and that is prominent. As we have noticed that no fusion of gametes take place here, that means there is no chance of genetic recombination. If there is no chance of genetic recombination, it means there will be no genetic variation. So, in absence of genetic variations, all the offsprings will be cloned of each other. So, that happens here. So, this is the biggest disadvantage of asexual reproduction. Now, after this, let us go to the types of asexual reproduction. So, the asexual reproduction has been categorized in six categories or six types. The first one is fission, 
second one is budding third one is plasmotomy the fourth one is gimmel formation the four five fifth one is fragmentation or regeneration the last or the sixth one is spore formation now let's start from fission so in this method the nucleus and the cytoplasmic elements completely divides to form small daughter cells now on the basis of how many small daughter cells are produced this fission can be divided in two types one is called binary fission and another is called multiple fission so let's deal with the binary fission first okay so the binary fission when the organism attains the maximum size then it divides into two genetically and morphologically similar or identical daughter cells this kind of fission is called binary fission now while we are talking about binary fission when we study about this we have to keep again some points in consideration the first point is that here the nucleus divides first amitotically and after that the division in cytoplasm is done and at the last ultimately two daughter cells are formed which what happens here in amoeba we can see that first there is a cell where the division first occurs in the nucleus then cytoplasm divides and our, uh, ultimately we get two daughter cells now the second important point which we have to keep in our mind about binary fission is that it always takes place in a favorable conditions okay now when i talk about favorable conditions what are those favorable conditions okay so these are the sufficient availability of water food and suitable temperature so binary fission always occurs or only occurs under favorable conditions and examples where binary fission occurs are amoeba paramecium euglena and planaria now this binary fission on the basis of the plane of the division it has also been categorized or divided in four types these are simple or irregular binary fission longitudinal binary fission and oblique binary fission then transverse binary fission so here in the simple or irregular binary fission it occurs in any plane but it always occurs in the 90 degrees to the elongated nucleus or divided nucleus that means whenever the nucleus is getting divided then it occurs in the 90 degrees of the dividing nucleus so the best example is amoeba just as you can see here here the division takes place or the axis of division is in 90 degrees to the dividing nucleus and ultimately two daughter cells are formed now the next one is called longitudinal binary fission so in this method the cytoplasm divides longitudinally and the division starts from the flagellar end the example is euglena as you can see here in the euglena first a longitudinal furrow is created and that longitudinal furrow ultimately separates a single euglena into two separate daughter euglena cells the next one is oblique binary fission now what is oblique binary fission so here the axis of division makes an angle or some angle with the longitudinal axis of the organism seratorium is the best example now the last one is transverse binary fission so here in this transverse binary binary fission the fission occurs transversely the cell divides in a transversal manner and here in this way the organism gets split in two daughter cells this kind of cell division or this kind of binary fission which is called transverse binary fission it occurs in planaria so in this video this is it thank you we will cover other topics in the next videos thank you